implemented that incentive-based regulation, IBR, was implemented on a trial basis in 2016 to promote efficient resource allocation and usage, as well as ensuring equitable financial performance. Could the board elaborate on the RBR and to what extent it could affect the group's financial performance? On 28, 20, 28 December 2016, the government announced through its letter to Gas Malaysia the implementation of the first regulatory period, RP1, of the IBR for Gas Malaysia beginning January 2017 until December 2019. With the implementation of RP1, the government had set and subsequently Gas Malaysia had announced the base tariff for the entire regulatory period. The RBR allows changes in the gas cost to be passed to the customers every six months via the gas cost pass-through or GCPT mechanism. RBR ensures earnings clarity, stability and visibility to the group's financial performance while the GCPT mechanism under the RBR ensures financial neutrality with regards to fluctuations of the gas costs. Second question. The new benches of the group, namely Combined Heat and Power, CHP, Virtual Pipeline and Biocompressed Natural Gas, BioCNG, have all made progress in their respective segments. Could the board share with the shareholders on the prospects of each of these segments and the expected share of revenue contribution to the group? For the Combined Heat and Power, CHP, on 10 January 2017, our joint venture company, Gas Malaysia Energy Advance, Sendirian Berhad, commenced the first the, the operations of the 33 megawatt CHP plant for its customer, Torrey Industries, in Prague. Given the encouraging response, we are currently undertaking another project with 2 megawatt capacity in the central region, with targeted completion in the first quarter of 2018. On the virtual pipeline, on 24th October 2016, Via our subsidiary Gas Malaysia IEB Sendria Brahat, we commence the operations of the virtual pipeline business by supplying compressed natural gas to our first customer, Highcom Automotive Manufacturer Malaysia in Pekan, Pahang. In addition to pursuing customers within the vicinity of our mother station in Gaving, we are also evaluating the setting up of mother station in other areas. On the bio CNG, on 10th July 2016, our joint venture company, Sun Dhabi Gas Malaysia Bio CNG Sindhya Brahat, delivered the supply of Bio CNG to its first customer, OMI Alloy Sindhya Brahat, in Bukit Bruntong, Rawang, Selangor. We are currently in discussion with other mill owners to expand our Bio CNG facilities. As all these ventures, CHP, Virtual Pipelines, and Bio CNG, are still at infancy stage. Aggregate contribution to group's revenue is expected to be less than 3% in 2017. Question number three. One of the three anticipated key risks of the group is increased competition as a result of potential new licenses issued under the third party access or TPA framework. Where are the licenses anticipated to be issued? And what would be the expected number of licenses? As incumbent, Gas Malaysia is given a grace period of 12 months from 16 January 2017 to apply for the licenses. Under TPA, there will be in total seven licenses for which an incumbent can apply. However, the company intends to apply for the three licenses that are consistent with its current nature of business, namely distribution, shipping and retail licenses. Now the second part of the third question, would the board be able to provide an indication of an estimated percentage of erosion to the group's market share? New entity under TPA would be required to have firm contracts to procure gas, find customers and ensure proper setting up for system readiness. Given these preconditions and coupled with our 25 years of experience in the business, we believe that our market share will remain intact in 2017. <coughs> Furthermore, the regulatory instruments and other mechanics of TPA frameworks are still being deliberated 
and finalized by the regulator. Question number four. It was reported that the customer base for the year under review of 38,377 was lower compared to the preceding year of 38,690. However, it was compensated by the increase in the industrial sector that registered 819 customers, which contributed to about 99.1% of the total gas volume sold. What were the reasons for the decline in customer base and what is the expect expectation for 2017? The decline was mainly due to the closure of accounts by some residential customers. Notwithstanding this, we expect to sustain our customer base in 2017. The second part of the question. Since the industrial sector contributed to the bulk of the total gas volume sold, how and what measures is the company taking to further tap this sector? What is the expected growth in the customer base in the industrial sector? We will continue to build and expand our gas infrastructure, connecting new customers in existing and new areas. The expected growth in the customer base for industrial sector is expected to range between 4% and 6%. Question number five. In the interest of broadening the investor base and reaching out to more potential investors, the company had participated in a non deal roadshow hosted by J.P. Morgan, titled Asia Rising Dragon One on One Forum on 22nd and 23rd November 2016. What was the outcome and takeaways from the roadshow? The company benefited from the roadshow as it was able to showcase its business update and prospect, strengthen, relation, strengthen relationships with investors, as well as expand its investor base beyond Malaysia. Was there any resultant significant purchase of shares in the company by the participating institutional investors or other institutional investors? Yes, there have been 12 new foreign institutional investors or their nominees holding the company's shares. A few of which, as highlighted by Bloomberg, are namely 1. Alaska Permanent Fund Corporation 2. London Stock Exchange Group, PLC 3. New York Life Group Four, Nojas Bank, five, Overseas Chinese Banking Corporation Limited, and five, six, Victory Capital Management Incorporated. Now on the last question. We refer to the five-year financial summary on page 14 of the annual report and noted that certain data which would be useful to the existing shareholders and potential investors were not disclosed in the summary. To enhance the usefulness of the summary, we would like to recommend the following additional data to be disclosed. One, dividend per share and dividend payout ratio. Second, share price at end of each financial year. Third, total cash balances. Fourth, total borrowings. And five, net gearing ratio. The board takes note on the MSWG's recommendation on improving the usefulness of the five year financial summary of the annual report. I think for quick reference, you can see the screen in front for the comparison of the last five years. We have now concluded the MSWG Q&A session. I shall now pass the floor back to you, Dr. Chairman.